So as always, when we gather as community, let's take a few moments to welcome God's presence here with us. Lord God, our creator, we give you thanks and praise for all you are in our lives. The many blessings you have bestowed upon us. The many ways in which you show your love for us. We thank you for the many gifts you've given to the missionaries of the precious blood over these last 200 years and for the millions of people that they have touched by the ministry inspired by St. Gasper. We ask you as we gather today to celebrate our history, that it gives us strength and courage for our future, and that by our conversations here, we can imbue and inculcate more into our own lives the spirituality of the blood of Christ and reach out always to the people on the fringes of our society. Lead and guide us this day. May our celebration give praise and glory to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker. People often ask, what sets the missionaries of the precious blood apart? What makes you different from any other religious congregation or diocesan clergy? There was a time not too long ago when we may not have known how to answer that question. We knew in our hearts who we were, but what we needed was a way to explain and share our precious blood spirituality with the world. Then along came Barry Fisher. While Father Barry is from the U.S., I didn't come to know him until I was a student priest in Rome some 26 years ago, and he was serving as a general counselor and would fly in for meetings. We spent many hours together and have become good friends ever since. Father Barry was born in, a, in the small town of Columbia, Pennsylvania. He attended Brennerdale, our high school seminary in Canton, Ohio, and St. Joseph's College in Rensselaer, Indiana. His first foreign trip was to Peru in 1969 after he graduated from St. Joe's. He studied Spanish for several months in Lima while living with a Peruvian family. He then pursued theological studies at Pontifical Catholic University in Santiago, Chile, and was ordained there in 1973. Father Barry's call to serve in Chile was very clear, and he ministered there for some 20 years in parishes and at our school in Santiago. He was essential in forming and educating our CPPS candidates there. In 1989, our missionaries in Chile sent Father Barry to Guatemala, where he was the director of our seminary there. That same year, he was elected to the general council of the missionaries of the precious blood. He accepted on the condition that he could serve on the council but continue to live in Guatemala, where he was named director of the mission in 1991. He wasn't to stay in Guatemala forever, because in 1995, he was elected to his first two six-year terms as moderator general of the congregation. As moderator general, Father Barry was charged with the responsibility of animating our missionaries around the world, inspiring us, urging us to work together, and articulating our mission and our spirituality. During his time as moderator general, he visited each of the 500 missionaries in their own ministry around the globe. Today, Father Barry is the director of the International Center for Precious Blood Spirituality in Salzburg, Austria, and he is still living and he is still visiting our missionaries, as well as our lay associates and many others, as he travels worldwide preaching retreats and, conduct and conducting workshops on precious blood spirituality. We are fortunate that he said yes to our invitation to us today. Who, who better to talk about the CPS missionary spirit than someone who has lived it with every breath of his being for more than 40 years. Please join me in welcoming Father Barry Fisher. So thank you, everyone. It's good to have you here. Such a wonderful turnout to celebrate a very, very special day for all of us, our 200th birthday as a congregation. When I was asked to give this talk, I wasn't, you know, I'm always not certain how to focus the talk, 
So in the end, what I've done, or tried to do anyway, is to recount a little bit my own vocational journey as a missionary of the precious blood. And thinking back over my life, I recall two moments which I think were very important in my eventual discernment to go to live in a foreign land. The first time that I really specifically thought of becoming a priest was when I was in third grade, grade school, at Holy Trinity Parish in Columbia, Pennsylvania. Father Paul Amon, a precious blood missionary, was the assistant pastor at that time in our home, my hometown. And every so often, he would invite all the boys of the school to the church, and he would give a, a, a vocational talk. And I remember one time he said, now, if any of you want to become a priest, come over to the rectory and tell me. Okay, so I went back to school, and I told my third grade teacher, Sister Novella, about the invitation. She said, go over and tell Father you want to be a priest. I was third grade, what, nine years old maybe, eight years old? Eight years old, I guess. So I would know, I remember knocking on the door, and I was just a little skinny twerk. And I remember Father opening the door, and I looked up to this. <laughs> he seemed so big and so tall. Father Ram said, yes, he said. Well, I heard you wanted to see anyone that wants to be a priest. Well, I want to be a priest. Well, he so very gently and smiled, and he said, well, if you still feel this way in a few more years, come on back, and then we'll talk. <laughs> huh? Well, you know, never would I have dreamt at that moment that about maybe 16 years later, I would be again with Father Paul Lam in, in Chile. Because from our parish, he left for the missions in South America. And then later on, when he was in Guatemala, I would follow him in Guatemala and also become director after him in Guatemala. So one never knows. So that, first, that was the first time I really thought about becoming a priest. Now, until then, of course, at third grade, I wasn't thinking about missions or anything. But then later on, a second moment came, an important moment for me, when I was a, a senior year at Brunnerdale Seminary in Canton, Ohio. Father Jim Freilich was our religion teacher and I think was principal of Brunnerdale that year. He came into the classroom and he said, you know, there's this program called PACE, Peruvian American... Peruvian American Council for Intercultural Exchange or something like that. He said, if any of you are interested, let me know, and I'll try to raise some money in Canton, Akron, and the business people to get your tickets for you. So Rich Colleague and I, Rich, uh, later uh, also Precious Blood Missionary, we volunteered. We said, yeah, we'd like to go. So we went to Peru in 19... 64 was the first time, actually, I stepped foot in South America on this exchange program. And we lived with Peruvian families and actually just helped to build a minor seminary. It was a physical labor, but it was my first exposure to going outside of the United States into a foreign country. It was there that I think the seeds of a future missionary vocation were planted in me. I returned to the States and then when I got to St. Joe College, I decided I was going to, t my secondary was going to be Spanish. So under the expert guidance of Father Ray Serrati, I studied Spanish for four years, thinking that someday I'd be able to maybe to go down to South America for uh, missionary work. But then when we were in, I guess I was a junior at St. Joe College, something else happened. The same Father Paul Amen, who, uh, was somewhat of a visionary. He, with Father John Byrne, who was our provincial, Father Dave's uncle, uh, he was our provincial at that time. And between the two of them, they started this program that students could go down to South America to study if they hoped to do mission work there. So the first ones to respond to that was Father Tom Hem and a companion, Jim Geddick. And they left, I think, a the end of the 1968 school year, and then for destined for Peru, Chile, and then the next year, Carl Wilman and I were, went to Peru. Our idea was, 
if we wanted to work someday as missionaries there, it would be good to go as students and be educated there and grow up with there with them instead of waiting later on and going down with our preconceived ideas. So it was a, it was a choice we made and supported by the community. Now, we were the last, the only four ever to do that. I never quite, no one ever really told us why no one else came after us. <laughs> I would like to get into the provincial archives and see what the story is behind that. <laughs> but we were the only ones to ever do that. But I think, uh, and as Tom will certainly attest, it was an excellent experience. 